for joining us for this week's Rise and Thrive with EHE Health, an interactive series where we discuss all things health together. So my name is Sam and I am an on-site well-being coordinator with EHE um, and I am also a registered dietitian who absolutely loves to cook. Not as great at baking, so I'm really excited that Whitney's here um, to show us a little bit about a really awesome recipe she's got for us today. Um, so Whitney is the creator behind Alligator Pear and, and welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Whitney. Hi, thank you. Um, so basically I um, created Alligator Pear. It's a recipe blog to one, hold myself accountable for just staying on track with all of my diet expectations that I put on myself. But then also I've been following a low carb diet for about 10 years now and then a few years ago got diagnosed as being gluten-free. So I was like, oh great, that'll be easy because I don't eat bread. But I've, then I quickly found out that a lot of things that are low carb are not gluten-free. So then that became the next um, challenge that I had. So I started creating recipes and um, from there, Alligator Pear was born. That's amazing. That's a great story. Thank you for taking us through that. Um, so I'm really excited that you're here today and I'm super excited about this muffin recipe that you're gonna be making for us. So we're doing an orange, cranberry and ginger muffin, which is such a fun ingredient. So I can't wait to hear how it all comes together. And it'll be great for the Thanksgiving socially distanced gatherings we have coming up. Yes, yes. So why don't you take us through the recipe, Whitney? Sure, so we're gonna start with um, two and a half cups of almond flour sifted. You want to sift the almond flour, one, to incorporate all the other ingredients into it, but it also gives you a lighter texture. It removes all the clumps. Next, I'm going to add into it my spices. So what I have here is I have the baking powder, I have my clove, ginger, and then a pinch of salt. So we have all the, um, the recipe listed out. So we'll go ahead and just sift this in. The and spices. <laughs> we'll go ahead and sift in. What I'd like to do is um, do a mixture of, I'll talk about the, um, while I'm doing the spices, I'll talk about a mixture of the sweeteners because a lot of people who are on a low carb diet like to use erythritol when they cook, but it gives a cooling effect to the tongue. And then I also, um, I'm not particular about giving it, letting my daughter eat it. She wants to try everything that I cook. So I like to keep everything focused um, as less processed food and more all natural as I can. So what I do is I have a, I have half coconut palm sugar and then half erythritol. And I think that this gives a better taste as well. I love, as sorry, Whitney, I was just going to say, I love that you do that because, you know, being a registered dietitian, I'm always talking about how to reduce added sugar intake and, you know, the sugar alcohol, which is erythritol is a um, non-nutritive sweetener, but we don't want to have too much of either one. So I love that you split them and you were able to build a recipe around that. Um, and erythritol is actually one of the better tolerated sugar alcohols as well. So that's why we see it in a lot of our products and yeah. it works well in baking, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And so now what I'm doing is I am um, going to combine my wet ingredients. So I did all of my dry and now I'm going to do my wet. So I have three room temperature eggs and I'm adding it to melted butter. I'm using a third of a cup of melted butter. You could substitute coconut oil here, but I like the flavor that butter gives. And then I also feel that the coconut oil is a little too runny and it gives a little bit of an oilier um, finished product. So I prefer to do um, butter. Um, but if you need to use a different type of butter, whether it be vegan or anything else, you can go ahead and substitute that in and see how that works. I'm also going to add, I'm using a dairy-free milk. This is a creamer, which is coconut milk and almond milk combined, blend, blended. And it's like a half and half alternative. So I'm going to lightly go ahead and beat this, whisk this up and also add my vanilla in. And then this recipe comes together pretty quickly. So literally it's mixing your dry, your wet, and then you combine everything together. So I do like that and it is easy with kids. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my wet ingredients in. Uh, so Whitney, we have a question. Um, what's the benefit of having some ingredients be room temperature before mixing? Um, so the reason why I do the eggs at room temperature and the milk at room temperature is because I did melt the butter. And then also if you're using a coconut oil, it will solidify back up if you add cold um, ingredients to it. So I would want to keep it liquidy and then it also just comes together really well when you start to blend. And then, like I said, this comes together very, very quickly. And then 
once you start to get fully incorporated with the liquids, then that's when I like to add in the, I have a tablespoon of ground ginger and a tablespoon of orange zest. And so I'm gonna just break that up just a little bit just to get it to blend in easy. I love the flavor that orange zest brings, especially to a recipe like this. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and then it also, it, it just gives all of those fall vibes. Yes, yes. Those spices you added in, a couple of my favorites in there. Yes, especially combined with that ginger. It's just, just orange and ginger together is a masterpiece. Absolutely. Okay, so, so now I have it fully incorporated. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in my cranberries. These I use dried cranberries, but you can use fresh or frozen. I like the dried cranberries because they are shelf stable and so I don't have to run out. I just use what I have because I use, I like to use a little bit of them when I do like a chia seed pudding or things like that as a topping. I did reserve about one tablespoon, two tablespoons just to finish them off to make them look pretty. But we're going to fold those in. And that's it. This batter is ready for the oven. So what we're going to do now is I like 10, you can put, you can do 12, but I like to do 10 um, cupcakes because I think it gives you a higher rise and a nice fuller cupcake. It won't be kind of like a little sad in the cup. <laughs> so and I do, I have a one ounce scoop and it's about three um, scoops in each one. So I'll go ahead and just scoop out the batter. And then you, what you'll do after you get them all scooped out is, um, you, oh, I should have said that you have to preheat your oven for 300 to 350 degrees. Um, so go ahead and preheat your oven while you start mixing everything. And then it should be ready by the time um, you have everything mixed and ready to go. And then what I like to do is finish it off with a little crystallized ginger. And you can find a bag of crystallized ginger anywhere in the store. Um, stores like Walmart has it, Trader Joe's has it. It's pretty easy to find these days. I've even seen it in Marshalls. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy to find. So I like the crystallized ginger just because um, it gives a nice little crispy sugary texture. Um, it, it does have a little bit of sugar in it the way it is made. However, it's, it's minimal. So it's not enough to really um, do a large sugar spike or anything like that. It's literally, literally for taste. So you can, um, if you are concerned about anything like spiking your sugar or um, the sugar content, you can go ahead and admit, omit that if, if that is something that you're kind of on the fence about. And then I like to go ahead and just take the reconstituted, oh, did I say that? <laughs> I um, boil these in a, just for a few minutes. I boil the, boil the water first, then I take it off the heat and then throw in the dried cranberries swirl them around just a minute or two. Um, if you don't want to soak them too long because it'll take out a lot of the flavor, but what that will do is um, remove some of the sugar and then it'll plump them up and make them almost like fresh. <laughs> I've never done that before. That is such a great tip. I love that. Yes, you can even add orange zest and some fresh ginger into that water um, just to kind of infuse a little bit more flavor into the cranberries if you like. So yeah, this just gives it this is just a little cherry on top, <laughs> almost literally, to put um, the cranberries topping. And then the last thing is the crystallized ginger. So I just chopped it up really finely. I don't know if you can see that. And then just sprinkle it on top, almost like a streusel, but it's just crystallized ginger and it is a wonderful little pop on top of the uh, muffins. Perfect. And these are ready for the oven. And I mean, these are beautiful just like this before you even bake them. They are, I could see, even though it's a little far away, I could see how gorgeous they are and festive. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. And so they are ready for the oven and there you go. That's, you're gonna bake them for 25 minutes um, until they're golden brown. They will lift, rise a little bit, golden brown. And then what you wanna do is insert a toothpick. When it comes out clean, they're ready. Perfect. So Whitney, can you tell me a little bit about um, baking with almond flour? Is there anything you have to be cautious with? You know, we know that almonds are very healthy, but like specifically for baking, is there anything you have to consider if I wanted to sub in almond flour for a traditional uh, flour and recipes? 
Yeah, so it won't, it doesn't have gluten, so it's not going to absorb liquid, so you will have to adjust your ratios. Mm -hmm. um, and then I like almond flour, the texture with baked goods, it's, you can get it pretty close to the real thing. Um, if you use the right amount, you have to be more uh, cautious of the oils, as well as your liquids that you put in. So if you notice, I didn't put a lot of like actual water. There are some recipes, if you look up a recipe for a cranberry or orange muffin, they'll add juice into it. And instead of putting juice, I did the zest. So you still get that flavor without having to add the extra liquids. Because and sugar. Affect, yes, yes, and sugar. It will affect the rise and the, and the texture and the final product. Great. That's awesome. Um, so I was actually doing a little bit of research because like I said, I don't do a lot of baking because that fine measurement is tricky for me. But um, I did look up that in traditional recipes, you know, obviously if we're using a recipe like Whitney's, we have to really follow it exactly. But if you look at other traditional recipes, recipes you might find, if you can actually actually omit up to like 10 to 15% of sugar without it actually affecting the taste as much, um, which is really nice. And, you know, I even read up to 50%, which is a lot. You know, I feel like you have to be ready for, you know, it's not as sweet as what you would be expecting, but it is kind of fun to play with. And I always say, if you are going to change anything about a recipe, especially if you're baking, do a test run, right? Because <laughs> you never know how it's going to come out. Um, and what I also love about something like this is it's such a simple and safe recipe to allow the kids to come into the kitchen as well. Um, so I think, you know, especially in this time where we're home um, and we're hanging out with people in our household all the time, having these fun memories in the kitchen um, during this time can be really nice. And I don't know if you've experienced this, Whitney, but I know that bringing kids into the kitchen and having them help it, it almost can help with picky eaters because the more they can get hands on and involved and understand a little bit about what's going on, um, it's really a nice, a nice thing to bring to the table. And that is so true. A lot of people ask me, how do I get my daughter to eat the things that she eats? And this <laughs> she helps me cook. And when she's cooking with me, she wants to taste and touch. And um, yeah, it gives her exposure to things that she doesn't have a chance to say she doesn't like or doesn't want to try because she's like, oh, what is this? It, it piques the curiosity. So Absolutely. I agree with that. Absolutely. And then um, just, I also wanted to ask you, if I wanted to make these for Thanksgiving, um, can I make them the day before, two days before? What would you recommend? How well will they hold up? Um, you, I think you can make these up to three days in advance. They'll be good on the counter if the house is cool. If it's a warm house, I would put them in the refrigerator and they could probably be three to five days in the refrigerator. And then they also can be frozen. Great. Though no, that's always a nice tip too. If you have some leftovers, something that you can do with it to reduce waste. Yes. Oh, you don't have these leftovers. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. This has been so fantastic, Whitney. If there's anything else you'd like to share with us about your blog or anything, please feel free. Uh, yes. Um, thank you for that. Um, talking about cooking with kids, um, being home a lot, we've been doing a lot of cooking and she's been helping a lot. Um, so what we've done, my daughter and I, is we have a, we've, we've launched a, a, some products um, called the Little Junior Cooking with Alligator Pear Edition. So I have a full set of utensils. You get the apron. Um, and then I also have a chopping uh, set where it comes with three knives. And I have some videos. So if you would subscribe to or like, follow me on Instagram. And we, I do have a YouTube channel. You can subscribe there. I'll be posting videos soon of we cooked ratatouille. Um, we bake these muffins. So I have videos coming. Um, and then you can go to my website, www.alligator-pair.com, and you can find those sets, which will be a great uh, gifts this season, this holiday season. Oh, that is so great and goes right along with bringing kids into the kitchen. It's so perfect. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much, Whitney, for this amazing recipe. I can't wait to try it. And be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Rise and Thrive with EHE. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.